I have solved around 1100 questions on lead code and it has helped me crack a lot of interviews. But isn't it too much to solve 1100 questions? Hi everyone, I am Faraz and I work at Google as a software engineer. In this video, I will share my views on how you can practice, how many questions you should solve, how to revise and the mistakes which you can avoid while preparing for coding interviews. I started my college in 2017 and because I got a decent college, I thought college curriculum will be sufficient enough for me to crack my dream company Google. But soon after that, I realized that college is a good thing, you will have to do it yourself. I started learning C++ in my first semester. Along with the lectures, I used to practice problems on hacker rank. And it took me around two months to complete the C++ syllabus. Once I was comfortable with the programming language, I started learning basic DSA concepts like arrays, linked lists, stack and queues. I kept on learning for four months without even solving a single problem. In 2018, January, I submitted my first problem in lead code. And you know what happened? I ran away. Because the question was from dynamic programming. I didn't even know what dynamic programming was. I came to this question, started solving this, got stuck, and then you can see a huge gap in my journey. I think it was due to lack of guidance. Actually, there are two scenarios. Scenario one, when you keep on learning, learning, and do not practice problems, and eventually you will forget the topics that you have learned. Second scenario is you start solving problems and you haven't covered a particular topic before attempting a problem and then you get discouraged and then run away like me. So both of these scenarios are not good and we have to tackle them. So for this, we need a structured approach and we need a little mentorship or guidance. I got stuck in dynamic programming because there was no one to tell me that I have to complete backtracking and recursion before going to dynamic programming. Similarly, if you are trying a graph problem, you should be comfortable with trees. So start with basic topics like arrays, strings, then techniques like two-pointer approach, sliding window, because these are not dependent upon other topics. Once you are comfortable with these topics, start solving them on lead code. You can sort the problems according to the topic. So for example, you can go to the section arrays and start solving array problems. You can go to two-pointer approach and start solving questions which could be solved using two-pointer approach. So what I used to do is I used to start with easy problems to boost my confidence and then slowly make my transition to medium and hard problems. Most of the times I used to get stuck in medium and hard level problems. And you know what? I used to spend hours solving a single problem. So the thing is, there are many techniques and algorithms which are not that intuitive. And it is very difficult to come up with such techniques until we have solved few questions using the same technique in past. So that's why instead of feeling ashamed that you are not able to solve a problem, try to develop this approach of learning. This problem is going to teach you a new technique or a new algorithm which will make you better in future so that you can solve similar kind of problems in future. So that's how I started taking it instead of wasting hours and days. What I used to do is I used to give one hour to a problem and if I could not solve that problem in one hour, I used to look at hints and then solutions and then move ahead. Then you can move to other topics like linked list, stack, queues, binary search, sorting and you can apply the same technique here. Start solving problems topic wise and within the topic you can sort the problems according to the difficulty level. Try few easy problems, move to the medium problems and then to harder problems. And don't hesitate looking at the hints and solutions if you are getting stuck for more than an hour. After solving certain number of problems, you will start recognizing the pattern. Similar kind of problems will be repeated and same algorithm, same data structure will be applied to those problems. This is the stage we want to reach. As soon as we read a problem statement, we should be able to think of the data structure and algorithm which we have used in a similar kind of problem in past. Now, a very common question is how many problems you should solve before you move to the next topic. So you should solve around 30 to 40 hand-picked problems which basically cover all the patterns. I did way more than that and I don't think that this is the best use of time. I could have done other things. So if you are in college, you have a lot of things to do. You should enjoy your time learning and growing as a person instead of coding 24 by 7. And if you love coding, you have a lot of other things to do. You can invest your time creating some awesome projects. All right, so after learning basic algorithms and linear data structures, you can start learning recursion, which will help you in topics like trees, greedy, dynamic programming. There's one important thing that we should not forget. We will have to do revisions. You will have to revisit things which you have already done. Otherwise, there's a very good chance that you might end up forgetting a lot of things. Of course, you can't go and solve all the problems that you have covered. So what I used to do is I used to maintain a small list of problems. So let's say if I'm covering dynamic programming, I will basically put two problems from each pattern in that list 
and try to revisit it, try to resolve these questions on weekends. So this way I was able to retain the algorithms and the data structures. As I solved more and more problems, I developed more interest because now I was able to think faster. DSA started become easy for me. Instead of taking it as a punishment, I used to take it as a game. I was participating in contests, I was solving a lot of problems and enjoying the journey. And that's how I ended up solving 1100 questions. This journey is a bit long. It's advised that you find yourself a good mentor. I never got a mentor and I regret that because I spent a lot of time correcting myself when I was working in the wrong direction. I became that mentor for my own sister. She hated coding in the start, but ended up getting placed at Uber, Microsoft and Amazon. You should try to find yourself a good mentor who can guide you throughout this journey. And unlike me, 400 questions should be sufficient enough for you to crack any company that you want. I have also launched a 4 months DSA course which covers all the concepts starting from the programming fundamental to the advanced DSA concepts. It is a well structured course and we are going to do that pattern based learning. There are 400 hand picked problems which will basically cover all the DSA concepts and all the patterns which we can see while solving problems. There will be one on one doubt support as well because I know you're gonna get stuck while solving problems. The classes are going to be live so we're gonna sit together live and solve problems and then discuss the approaches and solutions. And don't worry if you're not able to attend it live. The recordings will be available to you for lifetime. Last but not the least, consistency is the most important thing. You can look at me coding regularly in 2019 and this is what helped me. So whether you are going with the course or learning it by yourself, be consistent in your journey. If you want to know the detailed curriculum of the course, link is there in the description, you can go and check it out. If you want to enroll in the course, do it as early as possible before the registrations are closed. See you in the next video. Till then, bye bye and take care.